Bullet journaling is a method of journaling that is designed to be simple yet effective. It was created by Ryder Carroll who wanted to create a system that was flexible enough to accommodate all types of people regardless of how they wanted to organize their lives. It is a method that combines note taking, planning and journaling to help you stay organized and productive. This is my bullet journal setup for the month of September. But before getting into that, I would like to talk about why we journal in the first place. There are different mindsets that people might have when organizing their journal. I will discuss two groups of people here. Number one is the aesthetics first. These people focus on making their journal look beautiful. They use different colors, fonts and designs to make their journal look visually appealing. And number two, the functionality first. These people will prioritize functionality and making room for improvement using the one person rule which you might have heard from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. They focus on the practical aspect of their journal, making sure that every page is useful and helps them stay organized. Now regardless of which mindset you fall into, you can always make sure your bullet journal is personalized and unique to your own needs. However, you should follow some basic principles to make the most out of it. The bullet journal system is built around few main modules, the index, the future log, the monthly log, the daily log and collections. These modules are designed to help you stay organized and productive and they can be adapted to meet your specific needs. Index is basically the table of contents for your journal. It helps you keep track of all the pages in your journal and make it easy to find the information when you need it. Future log is where you track events, reminders, projects, etc. that are coming up in the near future, but not within a very short time. For example, your friend might have his birthday coming up in 3 months and you want to make sure that you don't forget about it. What you can do is, you can add it to a new future log so you know when it's coming up. Thus, it can help you stay on top of your goals and commitments both in the short term and long term. The monthly log is a useful tool where you can write down and plan for all the events and tasks that you have for a given month. You can note down your schedules, tasks and things you want to focus on that specific month. You see the daily log is the most functional part of the journal while I find the monthly log to be the second most important one. It helps you set visions and milestones you want to achieve over the following month. Collections are an integral part of organizing your life and keeping track of specific projects, events and other important things. By creating a dedicated collection, you can keep all relevant information together in one place, making it easier to access and manage. For instance, if you are preparing for a cultural contest, you can create a collection specifically for that purpose. Within this collection, you can note everything you might need later, such as research materials, important dates, and contact information. Plus, you can also create a tracker to monitor your progress and have clear metrics of your preparation. This will help you stay on track and ensure that you are making steady progress towards your goals. Finally, we have the daily log. A daily log is a simple way to track of your tasks, events, and notes for each day. It helps you stay organized and focused on what matters the most. Here, you can draw a bullet for each task, event, or note you want to record. Now while doing that, you want to be very clear and concise and use keywords that will help you remember the details later. Then you can review your daily log at the end of the day and reflect on your progress. You can also use your daily log to plan your next day by transferring or adding items as you need. One of the most important aspects of bullet journaling is the power of reviewing. People often stop journaling when they fail to do it for a few days. But you don't need to do it every day. Do it as you need it. In fact, there are weeks when I don't journal at all. It's alright as long as I am doing well. Plus, you aren't always on a constant productive curve. Slacking off is completely natural. You can make your system more tangible and you don't have to regret it if you miss a day or two. But you should do some sort of review periodically. 
that is where you get the most out of tracking what you do and how you feel it helps you make adjustments for the future so you can always keep improving because if you don't know your current self well enough how can you even think of making it any better now time for my setup the cover page is the first page of my journal and it sets the tone for the rest of the pages i don't deny that how it looks matters to me so i try hard making it minimal yet pretty For the calendar, I use a vertical format since it consumes less time. Back in 2019, I used to draw out calendars in boxes in the traditional method, but I found it really time consuming and it kept adding friction. Then once I completely stopped journaling, because I used to think that journaling was all about making it look pretty, but I was wrong. I didn't know a thing about how it could improve my lifestyle. I became consistent only after I learned how seamless it all could be. Trackers are not very appealing to me either. I typically just keep track of 4 habits per month. But lately I felt like I'm losing track of the many things that are going on. So I made the decision to keep track of my Salah, my well-being, the regular 4 habits and what I am studying. I use trackers to help me remember each day what I need to get done in order to consider that day a success. If I don't, I get really stressed.
in the mental inventory, I transfer all of my tasks and projects from previous months and the future log to this month as I turn to this page. I also set new goals for the month. This is genuinely the part when I start making plans for the month while setting objectives. I usually do this at the end of the month when I conduct the monthly review so it's all blank for now. So that was it. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope we meet again in the next video. Until then, bye.